City Harvest Church, we need to ask God to give us a heart for His house so that God will have a heart for our house. Now let's jump a little more than a century to 120 years into the future. 2 Kings chapter 8. This is 120 years after David was dead and gone. Look over here, 2 Kings Chapter 8, verse 16. Now, in the fifth year of Joram, the son of Ahab, king of Israel, Jehoshaphat, having been king of Judah, Jehoram, the son of Jehoshaphat, began to reign as the king of Judah. I want you to look at this guy called Jehoram, right? He was 32 years old when he became king. He reigned eight years in Jerusalem. And he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel, just as the house of Ahab had done. For the daughter of Ahab was his wife, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Jehoram married the daughter of Ahab and Jezebel. Imagine, Jezebel, the mother-in-law. Man, all the mother-in-law jokes come to pass in her life. I mean, this is like a nuptial made in hell. A very demonic couple. Ahab, Jezebel, they had a daughter. And she married into David's royal bloodline. Jezebel's daughter instigated Jehoram to sin against God. He was walking in wickedness. Look at verse 19. Yet the Lord will not destroy Judah for the sake of his servant David, as he promised him to give a lamb to him and to his sons forever. God wouldn't destroy Jehoram and the whole nation of Judah because of the promise he made to King David when one day he stood by the balcony and said, I will arise and build God a great house in my generation. Oh, come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. <laughs> 120 years after David was dead and gone and God was preserving his seed. Now, let's really stretch and break fabric right now. Let's go all the way to 270 years into the future. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 19. This is almost three centuries after David was dead and gone. 2 Kings 19. We have an Assyrian general and a king coming against Jerusalem. And Jerusalem didn't have a chance. The whole city is about to be destroyed. There is no way or there was no way of escape for them. Look at verse 34. 2 Kings 19, verse 34. For I will defend the city to save it. Why? For my own sake and for my servant David's sake. And it came to pass on a certain night that the angel of the Lord went out. Friends, we have angels fighting for us. You have angels fighting for you. You can see them, but they encamp around those who fear the Lord. Turn to your neighbors on your left and right. There are angels fighting for you. Tell them that. There are angels fighting for you. Look at verse 35. It came to pass on a certain night that the angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of Assyrians 185,000. How many? 185,000. And when people arose early in the morning, there were corpses everywhere, all dead. Now, the enemy was a man called Sennacherib. Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went away, returned home, remained at Nineveh. It came to pass, as he was worshipping in the temple of Nisroch, his god, so Sennacherib was worshipping, his sons, Adramelech and Shariza, struck him down with the sword, and they escaped into the land of Ararat. Then Asahedon, his son, reigned in his place. Look, all David had was a desire to build God a house. And God said, David, I will build you your house. And 300 years later, 185 soldiers died in one night. David was killing more people when he's dead than when he's alive. <laughs> David was more powerful now that he's dead than when he's alive. All because one day he stood at the balcony, he saw outside and said, I will arise and build God a great house. Come on, City Harvest, give the Lord a big clap. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Righteous living with righteous decisions pays rich 
dividends. Not just while you're alive, but even when you're dead and gone. It will affect your children, your children's children, your great-grandchildren for generation after generation. You say it by pastor, even if our kids aren't too bright, absolutely, God's going to work because God will keep His promises. How to make that happen? By putting God first. Having a heart for His house, that's a requirement. That is the requirement. And that's the Bible principle, not just for David, but for everyone who loves his house. God says, the way you respond to my house is how I will respond to your house. Church tonight is Arise and Build weekend. Why do we arise and build? Three reasons I just told you. Number one, we want a legacy for eternity. Number two, we want a legacy with inheritance for our children and our children's children. Number three, we want a legacy of blessing. Not just for us, but for generation after generation after generation.